Hello, Bismarck United Church of Christ. This is hopefully we're live now. This is our um, our backup camera, and uh, we seem to be having some internet connection issues. But anyways, welcome to our Wednesday evening worship service, and we've been doing these services um, throughout Lent, and we are continuing now in the season of Easter just to, to take a pause in the midst of our week, to pause and be present with one another, and just to take a moment to reflect on where our souls are and where our faith is in this time. And so I invite you this evening, whether you're watching us live or you're joining us later on, to just start by taking a breath this night, just to breathe. I don't know about you, but I know sometimes for me, I, I don't take enough deep breaths in the day and take enough times to just acknowledge the breath of life, this gift that has been given to us to acknowledge that and just to be here. So breathe, just take a deep breath in and let it go as well to breathe with each other, to be present in this place with each other. Welcome, welcome to this space. I wanna share with you a traditional Irish blessing for the start of our worship. And it, it goes like this. May the blessing of light be on you light without and light within. May the blessed sunshine shine on you and warm your heart till it grows like a great peat fire, so that the stranger may come and warm himself at it and also a friend. And may the light shine out of the two eyes of you like a candle set in the two windows of a house, bidding the wanderer come in out of the storm. And may the blessings of the rain be on you, the soft, sweet rain. May it fall upon your spirit so that all the little flowers may spring up and shed their sweetness on the air. And may the blessings of the great rains be on you. May they beat upon your spirit and wash it fair and clean. And leave there many a shining pool where the blue of heaven shines and sometimes a star. And may the blessings of earth be on you. The great round earth. May it ever have a kindly greeting for those you pass as long as you're going along the roads. May the earth be soft under you when you rest upon it, tired at the end of a day. And may it rest easy over you when at last you lay out under it. May it rest so lightly over you that your soul may be off from under it quickly and up and off and on its way to God. And now, may the Lord bless you all and bless you kindly. That's a traditional Irish blessing for you. On this night, as we pause in the midst of our week, I wanted to reflect with you on um, today it's April 22nd and it's Earth Day. And it's a day since 1970 that the United States has recognized as um, a celebration and a call to action of caring for, for the Earth and caring for creation. And it's also recognized globally as well. And, and there have been, in recent years, and actually 
since the 70s and before that. <laughs> so not even just recent years, since for my entire lifetime and for the entire lifetime of many of you, the earth has been a big part of our conversations in the way that we speak with each other in the way we reflect. And actually, the earth and all of creation has been a part of people's conversations and shaped the way that we are with each other in the way we think and has called us into action since the very beginning of humankind. And I want to show this to you in our scriptures. So I, I have with me tonight, it's a New Revised Standard Version Bible. This one, this particular verse type though is called the Green Bible. And some of you may have heard of the Red Letter Bible where Jesus's words, when you look in the New Testament, they're in red. In this green, uh, the Green Bible, what they've done is they've gone through and they've put in green the words that relate directly with creation. And it's interesting to look at it and see uh, places where it's just really dense talking about creation and um, to draw your eyes to how much creation is interwoven throughout the story of the Bible. And so this is a, it's an interesting just to open your eyes. I'd recommend checking out a green Bible sometimes. It is just a new revised standard version and um, but it's something that you can check out. I I don't think they didn't highlight all the places that creation comes into, but they did highlight many of them. So on this Earth Day, I wanted to share with you the structure of the Bible. So not the normal structure that you learned in confirmation where, okay, we've got the Old Testament, we've got the New Testament, sometimes called the Hebrew Bible, the Second Testament, the First Testament, different names for it in all of those pieces. And some of you may have memorized the books of the Bible. And so that's, that's not what we're going to talk about today. But you can pull back from that, from your confirmation classes, pull back the first book, in the last book in the Bible, you got those in your mind, Genesis and Revelation. And we're going to look at what bookmarks the structure of the Bible on this night. So Genesis is the first book in the Bible, and it begins with the story of creation. And it begins with two creation stories. And so I, I want to read from for you from the second creation story in Genesis chapter 2, starting in verse 4 and going through verse 9. So I want to read this to you. Listen, as if for the first time. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet on the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth, and water would rise the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man, or Adam, from the dust of the ground, and breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. And Adam became a living being, and the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east. And there he put Adam, whom he had formed out of the ground. The Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil." That ends our reading from Genesis. I don't want to skip because said we're looking at the bookends this night. So we're going to Revelation. And so this is the last book in the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, the very last chapter and verses one through two. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal 
flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the fruit tree are for the healing of the nations. So those were the two bookends, that second creation story, and those same elements are in the first creation story too. It's just a lot longer to read, so I read the second one. And the um, and then the final chapter in Revelation, the final chapter in the book of uh, in the Bible of how the Bible is structured. And what you have is you've got bookending from Genesis to Revelation. You have these two major elements of creation and of life. That before there was humanity, there was water. And there was springing forth from the waters this life. And you have at the end of Revelation, you have these streams of life, the water of life. And Jesus talks about the water of life too. Jesus offers the water of life to the woman at the well. Um, he says to come to me for I am the life and he offers her this water. And, and she, she's confused and thinks, well, how are you going to get water that I never have to drink again and I'll be fulfilled? And, and he's talking about a whole different type of water. But it's still connected with this water at the start of creation and this water at the end of the Bible. This other element that you have beyond the water are these trees. And you've got the tree of life. So you've got the waters of life at the beginning of the... Bible and you've got the waters of life at the end of the Bible and you've got the tree of life at the beginning of the Bible and the tree of life at the end of the Bible. And so book ending the Bible and why this green Bible has a tree on the front is because there's the elements of a tree and water is what the entire Bible is being held together by. And so it's a really it's a concept that often we skip over in our modern day world because uh, sometimes we get disconnected from nature. We might go into a, a tamed version of nature where we go for a walk in the park or um, we walk outside through town and see trees that we have planted ourselves, uh, but we don't always encounter the raw power of water um, unless it's in a disaster zone, then we talk about it, if we talk about hurricanes. But, but we don't always talk about the raw power of water that has formed the very land upon which we walk. The raw power of the water of life that has caused the grass and the trees and all of the plants to spring forth. We don't always talk about or think about that raw power of water, in, um, except for when we're in desperation sometimes. So that. Um, when there's a drought and we think, oh, if only it would rain, or if there's too much and there's a flood, and then we think about it. But these waters are essential to life, just as these trees that are bookending the Bible. So the, these trees, sometimes we call trees the, the lungs of the earth, which is very true, and breath is such an important concept in the scriptures that it makes sense that the lungs of the earth would also be an essential piece of the scriptures. So in throughout the Bible you've got this element of breath and as um, this element of breath is also how the Holy Spirit is manifest. This element of breath is that which gives us life. This element of breath is how it is that we come to know God just through the act of breathing and being. And the same is true for creation. That in the earth, this element of water and trees, these elements of life are so entwined with our own life that 
they are meant more than just as signs of God's presence in this place. They're actually, we are created and entwined within them. So humanity and creation in the scriptures are bookend with this water and with these trees. Because the, the ancient peoples knew it was impossible to survive without water and trees. Because it was impossible to survive without the breath of the earth in the waters which sustain us. And I want you to hear again, I this was in the first reading, but to hear it again where humankind comes in. So this is in chapter 2 verse 7. Then the Lord God formed Adam from the dust of the ground and breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. And Adam became a living being. And so, and in, if you're following along in your own Bibles, you may, um, it may say Adam or it may say man. Um, if you're reading in English, in other languages, may have another name. Um, in Hebrew, the word is Adam, and it it literally means uh, it's a play on word. Basically, it means like mud creature um, from dust from the ground is what Adam means. That and God took mud and formed humankind out of the dirt and the water of the earth and put the mud creature together and the mud creature then was there with the waters of life and the tree of life and so since that very moment the mud creature us since we were created we've been connected with these trees of this tree of life in these water this water of life and those elements play out throughout the scriptures. So I read you the bookends uh, tonight, but if you read through the scriptures, you would find that there are references to trees and water and elements of creation throughout the entire Bible. And it's not just that the people were using the things around them to understand um, God at work or understand the world around them that they worked with the earth and so they used metaphors that talked about the earth it's also that our very covenant with God relies on us being in relationship with creation it relies on our very lives our very souls rely on us um, upholding this covenant that God called us to this covenant to care for the earth in the, such a way that God would care for the earth. And this is a really important concept in Christianity. And it's a concept that we are called back to again and again and again. Um, and Isaiah says it best. Um, this is in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 23. Um, verses 4 and 5. Actually, verse 3, 3 through 5, I'll read. Yeah. And so this references to the covenant of creation. The earth shall be utterly laid waste and utterly despoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth dries up and withers, the world languished and withers, the heavens languish together with the earth. The earth lies polluted under its inhabitants, for they have transgressed laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. Now this part from Isaiah, this part of Isaiah is, is something, it's a, it's a warning to the people and a warning that this covenant way back in Genesis um, the covenant at the creation of the earth when God looked at all of creation and said this is good and said to humanity this is creation and I covenant with you to care for creation as I would care for creation 
Isaiah warns us that when we break that covenant, what it looks like is an earth polluted beneath our feet. That a broken covenant with God looks like creation that has been damaged by our own hands and by our own feet. And so the scriptures call to all of us and have called to people throughout time to find ways to not just take from the earth or live in um, live in a relationship with the earth of a give and a take, but actually to be caregivers of the earth in such a way that it's like if someone gave you their most precious gift that they had, if they gave you their um, so this gift that they had made and they said will you take care of this for me and and then when you got that gift if that person was one that you loved and you cherished that relationship with them you wouldn't take that gift and just throw it in the trash can or you wouldn't take that gift and just stomp on it or throw it out a 10-story window and see if it breaks on the way down when it hits the ground, you, you would really take good care of it. And you would put it in a place of honor. You, whatever type of care it needed, you would make sure that you cared for it in the way that it needed. And creation is that delicate gift that has been given not just to humanity but to every living being on this earth and so on this earth day which came way after these scriptures were organized we are reminded of that we're reminded that although this secular holiday calls us back to caring for the earth, that it's actually the scriptures themselves that have called to us since we were first formed, called to us again and again, and said, come. Come, be a part of the waters of life. Come, eat and be sit under the tree of life. Come. Come, be in this place. So friends, as you go about the second half of your week, may you find ways to be in deeper relationship with all of creation. Because the deeper we are with all of creation, the deeper we are connecting ourselves with God. For it is God who created this earth, it is God who called it holy and good, and it is God who calls to us again and again and again to care for that precious earth beneath our feet, the waters which sustain us, the trees which are the lungs of creation. So thank you for joining me for our evening midweek pause in life. And I invite you just to join me in a spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks for the ways that scripture continues to speak to us. We give thanks for the bookends of the trees and the waters. We give thanks that they have woven themselves throughout all of scripture and reminded us again that our very lives are entwined with the earth's. We pray that you may use our lives in ways that are good for all of creation and call us forth into your work, that your kingdom may be here on earth. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I hope you have a blessed evening and a beautiful rest this night. May you go in peace.